The story begins with a man named Napoleon who has just entered the city of Berlin, Germany. He is an American intelligence agent or CIA. Upon entering the city, Napoleon, who has an extensive knowledge, comes to a car repair shop to meet a woman named Gabby. Gabby is the daughter of a nuclear bomb maker professor and her father has disappeared because he was kidnapped by the Nazis. The purpose of Napoleon's visit was to save Gabby's father. Gabby has an uncle, who also knows the information about Gabby's father's abduction. Furthermore, Napoleon learns that there is a listening device in his suitcase, so he casually throws it into a coffee cup, as he knows that someone is spying on them. Later Napoleon takes Gabby out of there in Gabby's car. While outside, a man named Elia was eavesdropping on Gabby and Napoleon's conversation, and the two then hurriedly left. The chase was quite exciting, as Napoleon had to maneuver his car several times to trick Elia away from them. In fact, Elia is not a random person, he is a KGB agent or Russian intelligence. After playing a hide-and-seek game between Gabby and Elia's car, Napoleon finally managed to get Elia to crash into the road divider. However, Elia had not given up yet and he continued his pursuit. At that point Napoleon intends to take Gabby over the Berlin Wall barrier in order to escape the German state and find Gabby's father. After some clever strategy that had Gabby's car falling into an alley, Napoleon then entered some houses so that he could launch his next plan. Meanwhile, Aaliyah was already right behind them, having made his way up the apartment. Napoleon then contacted his partner to request a pickup and then he and Gabby slid using a rope and Aaliyah still followed them from behind. But unfortunately, Aaliyah's action was soon countered by Napoleon, so he and Gabby finally managed to escape. The next day, while Napoleon and Gabby were at the safe house, Napoleon's boss arrived. His boss told him that the little mess he had made had jeopardized the CIA, but Napoleon denied it and acted coldly towards him. Their conversation continued until Napoleon was taken to a park and into a public restroom. Instead of delivering an important piece of information, Aaliyah suddenly arrived and jumped up and knocked Napoleon to the ground. They clashed their respective martial arts skills until a man came, who was allegedly Aaliyah's boss. It turns out that American and Russian intel have collaborated to thwart the Nazis' nuclear bomb plan. Meanwhile, a company called Vinci Guerra is used as a shield for their nuclear project by the Nazis. The only way to stop the nuclear project is to get Professor Teller aka Gabby's father, before the Nazis finally launch it around the world. In their strategy, Gabby is the golden bridge to get Professor Teller. Gabby will later connect them with Gabby's uncle, Rudy. Napoleon's boss also told him that there was a device that they were after and had to secure. After explaining all the plans, suddenly all the cafe visitors stood up and left Napoleon and Aaliyah alone. Before long, both Napoleon and Aaliyah, who were like cat and dog, were at each other's throats, revealing information about each other. Aaliyah, who was quite upset, then slammed the table and left. The story then continues to Gabby and Napoleon who were currently in a boutique, and a few moments later Aaliyah came and immediately declared that Gabby was his fiancée. When she hears Aaliyah's words, Gabby goes berserk and storms out of the boutique. Napoleon then explains that Gabby and Aaliyah should pretend to be a newly engaged couple, because it will make it easier for them to attract Rudy's attention. After that explanation, Gabby finally agreed. The three of them then immediately flew to Rome, Italy, where they would perform their mesmerizing scenes. When they arrived at a luxury hotel, Gabby and Aaliyah took a walk in front of the hotel and chatted casually. Suddenly Napoleon, who was pretending to be an antique collector, came to meet them. Napoleon told them that they were being spied on by two men. Aaliyah, of course, already knew about that, but Napoleon still wanted to make sure and warned him not to do anything, rather he should just give in. As the story goes, the two men who followed Aaliyah and Gabby approached them and snatched Aaliyah's wallet and money as well as a watch given to him by his father. Aaliyah was upset and hit one of the robbers, but Gabby immediately calmed him down. Shortly after, Napoleon arrived, and naturally Napoleon and Aaliyah again had to argue, the two never seemed to get along with each other. The scene then moves to Gabby and Aaliyah who are in a hotel room. Both of them have received an invitation from Rudy to come to Vinci Guerra's company party. Afterwards, Gabby invites Aaliyah to relax his body despite the tension. The next day, Napoleon wakes up and realizes that every shirt and item in his room has a bug, and when he meets Aaliyah, it turns out that Aaliyah also got the same thing and later they exchange the bug. In order to continue their plan, Gabby and Aaliyah then prepare to go to Vinci Guerra's party. Meanwhile, Napoleon has already arrived at the party venue and he deliberately bumps into an invited guest to take an invitation to the party. However, his action was noticed by a bodyguard, so there was a bit of a commotion at the party. 
But thanks to the commotion, Napoleon finally managed to steal the attention of a woman named Victoria Vinciguerra. She is the one who runs the Nazi nuclear project. Luckily, thanks to Napoleon's pickpocketing actions, he was able to chat with Victoria. In the meantime, Gabby and Aaliyah have just arrived and met Rudy. A short while later, Gabby is introduced to Victoria, who happens to be with Napoleon. Then, the man whose invitation was stolen by Napoleon arrived as well. The man's name was Waverly. Waverly is visibly upset at Napoleon. In their actions, either Napoleon, Gabby and also Aaliyah, so far can play their respective roles. The story then moves on to the hotel. Aaliyah shows Napoleon a photo of a gamma radiation shot and tells him that Victoria and Rudy have been exposed to nuclear radiation. Later that night, Napoleon secretly entered a factory owned by Vinciguerra, but when he got there, Aaliyah was already there. At first they argued over who should go inside, but the two never agreed. They then showed off the sophisticated equipment they had to get into the factory. When they got inside, both of them then looked for nuclear data that they might find there. After searching here and there, they arrived right in front of a large safe. Napoleon then took over the safe's dismantling. It didn't take long for the safe to be opened, but they found nothing inside, the safe was empty. Unfortunately, the power came back on and the factory alarm went off. The two of them immediately ran frantically to get out of the factory. But unfortunately, many guards immediately shot at them, as there were no other options, the two of them finally jumped out through the window and immediately boarded the lifeboat. Their escape didn't stop there, both of them were again chased by the guards when they were looking for an open exit. Napoleon then fell and he chose to swim to the shore until he managed to enter a truck. As for Leah, he continued to fight the guards. From inside the truck, Napoleon enjoyed the sight of Aaliyah still being chased by the guards, while eating bread. However, it seemed that he was starting to feel sorry for him, so he was forced to crash his truck into the guard ship to save him. After the incident, factory officials immediately checked the safe and found it empty. An employee immediately informed Victoria, and of course Victoria suspected Napoleon as the one behind this incident and she then immediately stepped on the gas and followed by her bodyguards to the hotel where Napoleon was staying. Meanwhile at the hotel, Gabby gets another call from her uncle and they plan to meet the next day. Elsewhere, Aaliyah and Napoleon were racing against time to get to the hotel room before Victoria could raid Napoleon's room. To sum up, when Victoria arrived at Napoleon's room, luckily Napoleon had already changed his clothes. Victoria then closed the door and told her bodyguard to leave. The next day, the trio prepared for Gabby's meeting with her uncle, Rudy. A wiretap was then placed on Gabby so that Napoleon and Aaliyah could pick up on their conversation later. On their way, Rudy said that he would take Gabby to lunch at a place owned by Vinci Guerra. When they arrived, it turned out that Aaliyah didn't want to let Gabby go alone, he then hid behind the bushes while turning on the sound detector. In addition, Napoleon was also there, to meet Victoria in her office. Unlike Napoleon who enjoyed his meeting with Victoria in a relaxed atmosphere while enjoying a drink, elsewhere Aaliyah had to desperately run to avoid the guard dogs. The plot twist happens, Gabby betrays them both. She tells the truth about who Napoleon and Aaliyah are and of course it leaves Aaliyah, who was listening to Gabby's conversation, shocked. Bad things also happened to Napoleon, the drink he took from the table turned out to have been poisoned by Victoria. Not only that, Victoria also knew who Napoleon really was. When the poison he drank had lost its effect, Napoleon was awakened and surprised to find himself in an electric chair. Rudy was also there. A little information about Rudy, he is a scientist, just like Gabby's father. Rudy also works for Victoria on a nuclear project. Rudy plans to torture Napoleon slowly, starting with his story of being a Nazi executioner, who has tortured many intelligence agents, he even recorded it in a book. Meanwhile, Victoria is preparing to go somewhere. At around the same time, Aaliyah set out to find Napoleon. The long story that Rudy told to Napoleon, managed to give Aaliyah enough time. While Rudy was still telling the story, Aaliyah arrived and he managed to immobilize Rudy. Now their positions have changed, Rudy is sitting on a chair he made himself. From Rudy, they got information that the nuclear device was hidden on a remote island owned by Vinci Guerra, and not only that, the launching schedule would also be carried out tomorrow at 8 in the morning. Based on the information they had received, Aaliyah and Napoleon then had a discussion, while waiting for the electric chair to turn on, because previously the chair had an error. However, without them realizing it, the electric chair was activated and Rudy had to die due to the electric shock. Meanwhile on the other hand, Gabby has arrived at an island owned by Vinci Guerra and for the first time, Gabby can finally meet her father, Professor Teller. 
At the same time, Aaliyah and Napoleon tried their best to fly to the island. Both Aaliyah and Napoleon were then called by their respective bosses. Their respective bosses both requested that the research data on the nuclear plant could be secured by them in order to cancel the launch plan. Sometime later, Waverly briefed Napoleon and Aaliyah on their plan to thwart Vinciguerra. Meanwhile at the same time, Gabby and her father, Teller, were also making plans to thwart the nuclear launch. The two are then taken into a research lab to finalize their nuclear project. In addition, while planning the ambush on Vinciguerra Island, Waverly accidentally mentions that Gabby is also a British intelligence agent under his control, and Waverly asks Napoleon and Aaliyah to be able to save Gabby and also her father. Inside the lab, Gabby and her father deliberately swap the original optics with other optics, which would then cause the nuclear bomb to not work properly. However, their actions are unfortunately discovered by Victoria and Gabby is immediately dragged into an underground cell. Elsewhere, Napoleon and the joint armed forces are heading to the island of Vinciguerra. Back to the lab, Teller can't do much but to obey what Victoria told him to do. Victoria then asks him to hand over the nuclear data disks so that she can recreate other nuclear devices at any time. After Victoria got the nuclear data disks and also the backup, the unfortunate fate befell Teller, he was shot dead by Victoria. To make a long story short, the attack on Vinciguerra Island finally happened, and by that night, the island had become a battlefield. Napoleon and Aaliyah seemed to have become closer than before. In the attack, they worked together. They also finally learned of Teller's death. A few moments later, Napoleon looked for Gabby in the cell, but Gabby was no longer there, because apparently, Alexander had taken Gabby away in his car. Napoleon and Aaliyah immediately chased Alexander. Napoleon chose to use a car while Aaliyah rode a motorcycle. The chase continued until they had to rack their brains on how to catch Alexander who was already far ahead. In the middle of the chase, Napoleon and Aaliyah finally managed to make Alexander's car stop and flip over. Napoleon then took Gabby out of the car and on the other hand, Aaliyah would not stay still, he managed to kill Alexander with his knife. Meanwhile, Napoleon also secretly managed to find Alexander's disc. But the story isn't over yet, as the nuclear bomb still hasn't been neutralized. The trio then rejoined Waverly and the naval warship. At that time, the captain of the ship informed them that the ship Victoria used to carry the nuclear device was nowhere to be found, because there were so many ships sailing in the ocean. However, Napoleon still had many ways. He tried to remember what the name of the ship Vinciguerra owned was. Long story short, Napoleon finally managed to find out the name of the ship and informed the captain of the ship. The captain then immediately contacted the ship named Diadema. Initially, the captain of the Diadema who picked up the phone, covered Victoria's whereabouts, but after Napoleon told him that Alexander was dead, Victoria agreed to talk to him and gave Napoleon and the team enough time to locate the Diadema ship via radar. Napoleon's team then launched a small nuclear bomb that Victoria had made, to destroy the ship that contained the actual nuclear device. After some time, Victoria and her ship along the nuclear device were destroyed. When things had returned to calm and safe, Gabby and Aaliyah returned to the hotel to pack up for home, but suddenly, Aaliyah was called back by his boss who informed him that the nuclear data disk had been successfully secured by the CIA and when he found out about it, Aaliyah was angered and upset because he didn't manage to get it. Aaliyah then went to Napoleon's room, who was at that moment, also getting ready to go home. When he realized that Aaliyah was after the disc, the atmosphere between them became quite awkward. Napoleon suddenly threw Aaliyah's watch which had previously been stolen by Victoria's men, not only that, Napoleon also honestly said that the disc was unlikely to be given to anyone, and in the end they both agreed to burn the contents of the disc. A short while later, Gabby and Waverly arrive, and Waverly then informs them that the three of them have been united into an intelligence team called UNCLE or UNCLE, 